Hi, I'm Pastor Ortiz with Victory Baptist Church, and I'm excited to announce our homecoming service June 7th. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we'll be meeting both at 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., and uh, uh, we've been looking forward to this day since uh, the beginning of a sheltering in place. Now, uh, I want to discuss in this video uh, why we plan on opening up on June 7th. Uh, both the practical and biblical aspects to that, uh, addressing some of the opposing views, as well as our efforts in keeping things uh, uh, safe and preventing any spread of this virus. So first and foremost, I want to say that uh, our president last week gave uh, his vouch of essentiality for the church, and I thank God for that. And then uh, Monday, our governor, Gavin Newsom, has... Uh, uh, given out his mandate that churches of a hundred and fewer may gather uh, together and we are a little over that but with those that won't be um, coming because of this uh, I feel we'll, we'll be able to gather together and, and meet that that number requirement now uh, the necessity of the church opening up uh, its doors to allow for corporate worship is because of the rampant uptick in anxiety depression and uh, uh, even suicide. Uh, for instance, this morning I dealt with a man who was experiencing uh, suicidal uh, thoughts and, and uh, how difficult things have been. Uh, the Washington Post on May 26th even wrote an article about how this sheltering in place order has created an uptick in mental health issues, including those that I've mentioned. And so there is a definite need for the church to open up its doors and gather together. Not only that, but biblically in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, we find both a command and a, uh, 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 a uh, encouragement for Christians to gather together. We find that there is a necessity in verse number 22 for people to draw near to Christ. And when we draw near to Christ, here's what happens. Salvations, uh, uh, regeneration uh, by a, a changing life, we become a new creature, and then baptisms. Well, these are three things that happen in the midst of a church. And uh, you can't do those things from the, the shelter of your home. And, and uh, now you can uh, lead people within your family to Christ. You can uh, help those people to learn uh, to grow in faith. But baptisms, you're missing the witnesses outside of your family. And, uh, uh, and then you're also missing the ordinance of the Lord's table and how necessary it is to draw near the church. But it's also an aspect of, of holding fast or professing our faith. Our faith. And uh, it says there in verse number 23, the necessity of, of professing our faith without fear, not wavering. And uh, verse 24 talks about provoking others to good works. And uh, we've got some good teachers within our church that do that on a regular basis, which is something we'll continue to do. Now, we won't have children's classes or, or anything like that. However, we'll have instructional uh, pamphlets and different things that we can uh, hand out to those to be able to help with um, teaching and instructing our younger ones. Um, and then it, it tells how, how we can worship. And how, how we worship is, uh, uh, verse 25, it says that we're to assemble, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. We ought to uh, assemble together. The Hebrew Christians that were converted at this time were fearful because there was heavy persecution on them uh, for leaving the, their synagogues, for leaving their Hebrew faith, and drawing near to Christ. And often they were saying, you know, I think it's better if I just stay away from uh, uh, this, this church thing and I just build my faith myself. And that's not what God has intended. He has died for the church. That's a biblical reference there. And, uh, and so he's exhorting them to assemble together. But not only that, it says that we're to exhort one another. Uh, I think it's necessary to exhort one another when we come to the church, encourage those that are around us, and keep us sharp. Iron sharpeneth iron. And I think that's something that the church does very well. And then it says, so much the more as you see the day approaching, understanding that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Maybe today my Lord will come for me. And it could be today. Uh, but that being said, we need to be drawing together so that way God's people can be ready, God's people can uh, continue to worship together, and uh, we can be that one body 
that is carrying out the will of God. Now, for those who maybe oppose this position of, of opening June 7th, maybe you're a little fearful understanding that we have our online uh, live stream services as well as our on-site radio station to help accommodate those that are living slightly fearful. We have, uh, 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 for those maybe who say, I'm just comfortable with the online thing, I I'd like to say, I, I hope you would get past that because there are so many limitations with an online uh, uh, ministry. Now, it's not a church. You can't have an online church because you're missing the accountability with the pastor. You're missing the... Uh, uh, ordinances of baptism and the Lord's table. Uh, you're missing the uh, exhortation of one another uh, within the church and the example of living your life within the church. And so it's a, it's a more of a ministry. And I, I would hope that at some point you would join us uh, together and worshiping God. And then uh, for those that are waiting for a vaccine, understand nothing's ever certain. The vaccine isn't certain. It's, there's no certainty that other people will even take the vaccine. And so my, my suggestion is for us to, to live in faith and uh, just trust God in that matter. Now, when I say live in faith, I'm not talking about being irresponsible or, or careless, but I'm just saying trust God that uh, uh, as long as you maintain your responsibility in how to uh, conduct yourself, that everything will be okay. Now, what are our efforts to prevent the consistent spread of this virus? And I do understand this is something serious and uh, it's not a hoax, it's not a, a political scheme. It's something that is definitely serious where there have been, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 100,000 people who have died from this disease. And so we want to be uh, take precautions uh, on this matter. Number one, mask will be worn within the church building. Uh, we're going to be creating separation in the church, uh, six foot separation uh, between different families and individuals. So that way there's no um, spread uh, among that. Uh, signs will be posted with our guidelines. Uh, no physical contacts will be uh, permissible on the, the church site. Um, anyone with a fever or a compromised system, we, we ask please stay home for at least 14 days to uh, just allow this to pass. Uh, all attendees will have their temperature checked with one of these infrared thermometers uh, by one of our on-site nurses who uh, just agreed to do this just, uh, just a few moments prior to me doing this video. Uh, no offering plates or hymnals will be in the service because we want to make this as much as a touch-free service as possible. Uh, we are going to increase our cleaning and disinfecting of the uh, of the church in between services. So just to uh, give you some peace of mind, uh, knowing that things will be cleaned on a regular basis. Our services will be shorter, uh, so that way when we're together, uh, there's no prolonged exposure to one another, uh, along with our HVAC system, which just has been fixed by one of our church members, praise God for that. And so uh, we'll have constant airflow so that way nothing's stagnant within the church. And then I want you to be in prayer for this. I'm praying that maybe we'll, we'll, we can set up a tent on the outdoor. We have a beautiful uh, facility here. Maybe setting up a, a, one of those carnival tents in the outdoors that maybe we'll worship outside in the midst of this beautiful California weather that we have. And uh, that way it helps with the exposure to the, this virus. And uh, th these are the different precautions we're taking. And I thank God for uh, uh, many nurses and, and people who have given input, uh, the wonderful staff and uh, leadership of, of uh, our attorney, David Gibbs III, there at the National Center on Life and Liberty. And uh, I thank God for each one who has given me in input to help make this the best experience and safe experience as possible. So church, I love you. Thank you so much for listening to this longer video than, than normal, but I hope it's a help and informative to you. We look forward to seeing you June 7th on our homecoming service. I love you. God bless.